Right now, Ed Oliver is ninth in run stop percentage per pro football mm. focus at 11.2%. He's 13th in pass rush productivity rate at 5.6%. Mm. And like you said, like, and even Greg, I thought, I think mentioned it on Twitter is that, you know, we're seeing, you know, Ed Oliver trending in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And, you know, one thing that I always look at when I'm looking at, you know, some of the stats on players and, um, obviously sacks are a re really big thing, but as we talk about all the time, pressures are just as important, uh, and affecting the quarterback. Mm -hmm. uh, but you know, quarterback hits, he's not getting the sacks, but if you look at quarterback hits for at Oliver, he's number two in the NFL. Mm -hmm. So this to mm -hmm. me says something and let's, I'm going to try to bring up the stats right here, Anthony, but, uh, talk about, you know, he had what three sacks last year, four QB hits, uh, mm -hmm. last year. So if you combine those two, we had seven hits on the quarterback. Uh, per pro football focus. We'll talk about, you know, how, how and why he is trending uh, in that direction of getting a lot more hits on the quarterback, maybe just, you know, inches away from actually getting a sack or some penalties away from getting several sacks this year. It all starts with his get off on the line of scrimmage. He's so fast coming out of the blocks and coming out of his stance, whether he's in a three point or a four point stance, he's so fast coming off and yeah. his technique this year with his hands, I think is his second biggest attribute, his ability to, you know, you, you, you'll, you'll see a lot. Like if you're watching like hard knocks or defensive line trainings, they're like, it's like random B roll film. You'll see the defensive linemen that are working with their D line coach and they're doing, they're working on hand techniques. It looks mm -hmm. like they're hand fighting. They're like in karate class as little kids. Hand technique is so tremendously important up front. And we have a couple clips tonight that are going to show how good at Albert yeah. with his hands, but his ability to just stay clean, his ability to chop and rip through and just eliminate a lineman trying to get into his body with a punch, he's just so – he's been so good with that. And when you combine strong hand technique with a strong get-off and a high motor, it's the reason he's been able to consistently penetrate and get upfield. And I love what you said about the QB hits because obviously in a perfect world, we love sacks. We love a guy to get in, sure. sack the yeah. quarterback, boom, that's great. But – QB hits and pressures are a sign that you're getting the quarterback out of rhythm. You're making life difficult for them back there. And we've seen multiple plays from Ed Oliver this year, not just in this Saints game, but um, the entire year where he puts a hit on the quarterback and the quarterback has to throw it early and he just throws it in the dirt or he hits a quarterback in the arm, ball gets deflected, somebody makes a play on the ball in the air. As long as you are getting to the quarterback and making life difficult for them, that is a tremendous thing. It would be ideal if it was leading or, or, or coming down to a sack, but pressures and hits are huge Ed Oliver is crushing it in that department. And it all starts with his get off from the moment the ball is snapped combined with his hand technique and ability to just continuously convert speed to power. Yeah. And what this, you know, QB hit stat tells me uh, again, aside from, I don't know what two or three, it had to be maybe two at the very least sacks that he should have had if there weren't penalties or whatnot. Oh yeah. Um, two huge ones. Yeah. What this is telling me is that, He's getting closer. Last year it was three sacks and four QB hits. This year it's one and nine. So it's telling me that, yes, he is trending in the right direction. He's always had the quickness and lateral quickness. He's always had the power move and ability to get up under guys' pads, as we'll see tonight with that bull rush. But what he's, what he's doing now with his hands is he's using that speed and his hand usage to get that short edge to get around offensive linemen and not allow offensive linemen to lock on him because he's a shorter statured guy, not long arms. So when there are talented offensive linemen that can just get their hands on him away from their body, he can't get up into them and under their pads. And so uh, I think this year you're seeing what that improved hand usage is allowing him to do. And it shows up on stats like this with this uh, QB hit metric from pro football focus. So. I don't know why teams try to run zone away from him and have a right tackle here try to reach block at Oliver who's yeah. in uh you know why three more of a four eye so let's set this play up second quarter first and 10 balls on the 49 yard line 313 on the clock uh, again no gain tackle here from at Oliver just watch how they try reach blocking him so again the right guard with the ball in the right hash the right guard cannot stay that long <laughs> On the double team, he, he you see him punching out, trying to punch at Oliver, and usually they're trying to hit you know the shoulder plate right here so they could turn him and allow the right tackle to uh, to work to their mm -hmm. front side to reach him. Well, he can't because of first look how how low to the ground Ed Oliver is, um, and Ed, Ed is a, a tad late on this as well. Uh, I'll say that, and he still wins this, which is incredibly uh, important on this play. So 
the guard can't stay long on this combination block. He has to climb to Ed Edmonds because, of course, he's got to try to angle him off, and that guy's an athlete. So he can't punch at Oliver on this play. And watch how quickly Oliver gets into the gap there. Look at how quickly he gets <laughs> across the face of this right tackle and just totally disrupts this play. Again, using that rip, look at him. He gets in the gap, he inserts into his gap, and then he rips through this arm block from the right tackle. And just, just watch, look at him by. He gets, he clears him, gets by him, and now he's taking the angle to the ball. Again, zone run to the left, so right to left on the screen, and he just cuts him off. The running back cannot continue his track back this way. And his eyes, the running back's eyes, technically brought him to Ed Oliver. Well, Ed Oliver just suffocated that run and suffocated that read. And, and the running back only took a few steps. So now he's going to try to cut it back. And that's when you say, see Ed uh, trip him up. And then the, the rest of the defense come and rally to the ball. Just incredible quickness off the snap. And I love how he analyzed this blocking. Like, I'm going to try to show you the stills. Watch his helmet shift left to right. And he, what he's doing right there, he's analyzing the footwork. All right. He's analyzing the footwork of these guys. You see this right tackle, his, both of his feet are almost, they're not staggered that much. You can see everyone else has kind of a stagger to them. Why? Because he cannot have, it's much more difficult. If this left foot is up and this right foot is back, it's much more difficult for him to take that bucket step to try to reach uh -huh. at Oliver. So he has to, we, we talked about this with Deion Dawkins on one of the zone runs earlier in the year. This came up where the footwork was a little off. Mm -hmm. um, and you can see Ed kind of analyzing that. And of course, um, once, once the ball is snapped, forget about it. He's too quick. It's the, the mental side of the game, I think, is such a hard piece for people to realize or understand and look. And you hit it right on the head. Like, and I love that you have it in this clip. You can see him like, okay, I'm aligned. Look at this guy's inside foot. Look mm -hmm. at this guy's inside foot. Okay, I think I know what's coming. And even as he's like he's analyzing, and as he's analyzing, they snap the ball. And you're right, like he doesn't have the best get off here, but his speed once he starts going is so disruptive. In 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 zone blocking schemes, you know, you already started to you know, speak about it. Like it's built on those double teams. Then you get those double teams on that first level, and then you climb to the second level. And what's beautiful about a zone scheme for an offense is the running back gets to kind of choose. It's like a choose your own adventure type of story. So yeah. say Ed, I'll say Ed Oliver gets, you know, Hayden Hurst here, the right tackle. Um, say he, he not Hayden Hurst, but uh, James. I think his name. yeah, James Hurst. There you go. Hayden Hurst is the tight end. Yeah. Say James Hurst is able to cross Ed Oliver's face here. Right. And he's able to hook him. Tony Jones can plant his foot. He can get upfield. He can run right off of uh, Cesar Ruiz's mm -hmm. uh, right leg and he can cut and get upfield. Or if Ed Oliver is too fast. Hurst instead can just wash him right down. Yeah. And then Tony Jones, like you mentioned, he can see that he can cut back and he can cut off of uh, Hayden Hurst, Hayden Hurst, James Hurst again <laughs> between the tight end. Yeah. And I try to make Taron Johnson make this play on the backside. But Ed Oliver is so fast and he moves with such great leverage and low center of gravity and technique that he completely blows the play up. So he's too fast inside to allow Hurst to cross his face and seal him. And then he gets so much penetration upfield that Hurst isn't able to push him down and wash him out so that Jones can cut back and try and make a play. It, it, it's, it's beautiful. And you mentioned it in the lean in for this, like why teams continue to do this. He's like the perfect guy that a defense wants on that backside responsibility on a zone run because of the leverage he plays with, because of the get off that he has, he can disrupt everything from the backside. I, I hate doing comps and especially this one, because people have always said it about him, but Aaron Donald does this a whole bunch. You get those quicker three tech defensive tackles. If they're able to penetrate like that off the backside on a zone run, it can destroy an entire play. And he literally shuts this entire thing down because of the way he gets off and gets that penetration. Again, zone, zone blocking allows you to do so many things. And his win on this play is so significant that it destroys the whole thing. And there's no chance of winning for that offense. Uh, this was a sack here that was split between Oliver and Obata, but um, Oliver is in a four eye technique. So he's just inside the left tackle on the screen. Uh, and I, as I labeled it, Watch his tenacity, the speed, the hand quickness, and how he counters. Like when you're countering, when you see a guy, a defensive lineman or offensive lineman countering what their opponent is throwing at them, like you see Ed Oliver do here and he, what he did in this game and in uh -huh. the last few weeks, 
that takes a certain level of processing, studying, understanding, uh, you know, all on the fly. And so on the snap, watch Ed Oliver uh, go back and forth with this offensive guard here. So on the snap, you see you see him fire out, and right there, he's using his right hand to chop down on the left hand of the guard. So the left guard went to punch out, Ed Oliver chopped it down, um, and again, you see the counter from the guard. He what he tries doing is almost like a flipper technique, kind of just using his forearm to kind of wall off at Oliver. So he, you know, kind of keeps him at a distance. He just lost the hand battle. So he's now trying to body the guy, body at Oliver so that he can't get past him. So watch what at Oliver does. You know, again, we talked about his hand usage. Well, he still has the feet. He still has the lateral quickness. He just uses his he switches modes instead of going from, you know, uh, more of a speed rush. Now he's going to use his lateral quickness to kind of side swipe. Uh, that guard. So right there, he reengages as he's moving his feet from left to right and gets his hands on the guard. And you see the guard recover with his hands. So now he's, you know, punching with two hands and creating separation between himself and Ed Oliver. But again, Ed Oliver keeps his feet moving here. And what's he do? He lands a long arm after the space is created. He lands mm-hmm. his long arm right there. So he's got the left arm up in the shoulder. Look at the hand placement perfectly on point. Now he's in a a dominant position because now he's got the guard at, you know, at length. He's got a a possibly a short edge and you see his right hand here. This is what's super important. Watch him lift that hand right there. Look at the hand control as he lifts that outside hand, that left hand. So a long arm, arm lift. That gives him a short edge. He clears him again. Look at him move his feet, right? He gets his feet into the gap. And then now he's got the line to the quarterback and now he, and Obata are meeting at the quarterback. You see Oliver go low uh, on the t- for the tackle here in the sack with Obata. Man, this was this was some awesome stuff. You know, we love watching the trenches because of that you know punch counter punch mentality, yeah. that boxing mentality, that back and forth that you can visually see. This was one of those plays, and I hope we see a lot more of these as the season progresses. I love that you mentioned like the the boxing aspect and the back and forth because you know play, players are always processing and they're always learning and they're always adjusting, right? So this is the same guard who at Oliver beat in the first clip that we showed where he created that short edge and he was able to chop down the punch attempt and immediately transition into that rip, rip through and flatten, right? So a similar thing starts to happen on this play, but this time the guard, he knows how he got beat last time, right? So he adjusts. He hits that flipper technique that you mentioned, Eric, and he doesn't want to get beat right away. He he gets that – Ed gets that chop. The guard knows what happened last time, so he throws that arm out there to try and keep Ed at bay because he's like, no, last time you did this, you beat me right inside with that rip. I'm not letting it happen. I'm going to set you back up. I'm going to try and get some extension. I'm going to try and create some separation. I'm not going to let you let me – I'm not going to let you turn me horizontal right away and win this rep. And look what the guards, look at the guards feet. Look at his base. It's so wide there after that that counter. Yep. Because he got nailed in the beginning. He got, he got hit being narrow and just got completely blown by. So he's trying to set that base. He's trying to reset. And this is, we talked about the mental piece a couple plays ago when Ed was analyzing the stances of the guard and the tackle in front of him on that backside zone play, right? The mental piece is huge. The ability for him to get hit in this in this rep and reset, he almost resets. He analyzes the spot yes. in the pocket and sees what the guard is doing in front of him. And he's like, okay, all in the blink of an eye. So we're breaking this down and talking for like two, three minutes on this one thing. <laughs> he's doing all of this in the span of like 0.75 seconds. Right. So he sees the positioning of the guard in front of him, knows what he has to do. He resets. He gets that long arm beautifully right into that armpit and shoulder pad area. So he t- so he takes that, his left arm, gets it onto the inside of the right arm of the guard. So that way he can control him. He gets that stability. And then he literally, again, for, for those of you who aren't watching and you're listening on the audio version, Ed Oliver literally takes his hand and he puts the wrist of the guard, of the guard's inside arm. He puts that wrist between his index finger and his thumb and just lifts it almost like you're lifting a bar at the gym or you're lifting some kind of like lever and just lifts his inside arm transition right, right into the hole with his footwork continues his rip through straight line to the quarterback. He's doing all of these technical physical pieces while at the same time calculating, okay, 
Here's the snap. I'm about to do this. Okay, that didn't work. Reset. What's the plan? Here's what the guard's feet are. Here's where his arms and his upper body are. There's where the QB is. Boom, done. And he's through. And we get another disruptive play. Tremendous technique and mental progression from Ed Oliver. Again, we, we talked about in the beginning, a star in the making. He's he's operating on another level. And the Bills are going to need him to because with someone like Tredavious White down, everybody, coaches, players, offense, defense, special teams, everyone, they all need to step up and make more plays. And Ed's been operating on another level all year. And with what we've seen from this Saints game, if that can continue to track and trend, it's huge for this defense because he's been a monster. Yeah, it's been fun to watch with him. And everything is, again, pointing in the right direction uh, with him. And uh, hopefully uh, he can even take it to another level because, again, we talked about the Bills are going to need it when it comes to the pass rush to help that secondary and the loss of Tredavious White. So.